What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to Casually Competitive MTG where it's our goal to provide you with fast paced and entertaining semi-competitive EDH gameplay content. For the first episode of our first ever season, we decided to let the players pick some of the decks they most wanted to play, and I think you'll really enjoy the game that we have in store for you. Quickly, before we get into the opening hand and deck introductions, I do want to let you know that if you are interested, we now have a Discord. If you want to talk to us or just be a part of the community, go ahead and click the link in the description to join our Discord. I also want to let you know that if you are looking to support the channel a little bit extra, we do now have a Patreon. If that's something that interests you, go ahead and look at the reward tiers they include viewing videos early casually competitive memorabilia and many more so head on over there if you're interested but now with the promotional stuff out of the way let's get into the opening hands and the deck introductions going first today we have adam playing his yeast on the wanderer bard mono green deck the goal of this deck is to ramp out quickly play Yisan, and then activate Yisan to tutor out creatures that are needed for a combo in order to generate infinite mana, and then win through something like a Finale of Devastation, just overrunning the board. His opening hand of 7 today contained a Forest, a Land of War Elves, a Birds of Paradise, a Benefactor's Drought, a Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, a Cloudstone Curio, and an asceticism. Going second today, we have Joseph playing the partner commanders Thrasios and Bruce Tarl in a deck that's known as Blue Pod. This deck is a stacks based deck that looks to slow down and control their opponents while it waits to assemble a combo with Kiki Jiki or Splinter Twin and using something like a Birthing Pod or just one of the many tutors to assemble this combo. He kept 7 cards in his opening hand today and those cards were a Waterlogged Grove, a Bountiful Promenade, a Hollowed Fountain, a Training Grounds, a Pyroblast, a Meltdown, and a Felidar Guardian. Going third, we have Jordan playing Najila the Blade Blossom. This deck looks to use Najila to swing early and fast, dealing damage to his opponents pretty quickly, and then assembling some type of combo using like Derev the Imperial Tactician or a Druid's Repository in order to make all of these tokens allow him to untap or gain extra mana and take infinite combat steps with Najila's ability. His opening hand today contained a Mountain, a Windswept Heath, a Polluted Delta, a Mindblade Render, a Fertile Ground, and a Cryptolith Rite, bottoming a Blood Gin Rager. And finally, we have Nate, playing Urza, High Lord Artificer. This deck looks to control the board using a myriad of counter spells and other blue control spells until it can assemble some type of infinite combo using something like a Dramatic Reversal and Isochron Scepter to untap artifacts, or through something like a Training Grounds Pilly Pala combination that allows him to do the same thing and generate infinite mana, and then activate Urza as many times as he needs to in order to win the game. Nate kept his second hand of seven today, and that opening hand contained an Island, a Buried Ruin, a Mental Misstep, a Witching Well, a swan song, a brainstorm, and an arcane denial. Now with the opening hands out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Adam starts off our game today by drawing, playing a forest as his land for turn, and then tapping that forest to cast the land of war elves. He then passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph draws, and shocks in a hollowed fountain, taking two damage. He then taps hollowed fountain for a blue to cast the training grounds. Knowing how strong this card is in combination with Thrasios, Nate decides to pay two life to cast the mental misstep in response, countering Training Grounds. Training Grounds is countered, and Joseph passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws, and plays a Polluted Delta as his land for turn, then gives the turn to Nate. Nate draws, and plays an Island as his land for turn. He then taps that Island to cast a Witching Well. As it enters, he scries two, and decides to put both of them on the bottom. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays a tapped Tranquil Thicket as his land for turn. He then taps for one green mana to cast a Birds of Paradise. He then goes to combat and swings his land of war elves at Jordan for one damage. Jordan takes the damage, and Adam then gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and shocks in a Breeding Pool as his land for turn. He then taps for two mana to cast a Thrasios. Thrasios resolves, and Joseph goes to give the turn to Jordan. On Joseph's end step, Jordan cracks his polluted delta, taking one life, searching up an overgrown tomb, and has it enter tapped. He then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays a command tower as his land for turn. He then taps for two mana to cast a fertile ground, targeting his command tower. It resolves, command tower is now enchanted, and Jordan passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and plays a buried ruin as his land for turn. He then taps that buried ruin to cast a soul ring. He then taps the Soul Ring to cast a Sorcerer's Spyglass. There are no responses to Sorcerer's Spyglass, and as it enters, he decides to look at Joseph's hand. 
Once he's finished looking at Joseph's hand, he names Yisan the Wanderer Bard as the card, and now activated abilities of Yisan cannot be activated. And with nothing left, he passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and taps for two mana to cast an Emerald Medallion. He then taps for only two mana to cast a Shaman of the Forgotten Ways. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a waterlogged grove as his land for turn. He then taps for two mana to cast a Collector Oof. In response, Nate taps for one blue mana to cast a Brainstorm, drawing three cards, and putting two back on the top of his library in any order. He then passes priority, and Collector Oof resolves. Joseph then goes to combat and swings Thrasios at Jordan, dealing one Thrasios damage to Jordan. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and plays a mountain as his land for turn. He then taps for three mana to cast his commander, Najila the Blade Blossom. There are no responses to Najila, and he gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and plays an island as his land for turn. Wanting to hold up mana, he decides to immediately pass the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and then taps for two mana to cast Yisan due to Emerald Medallion. Yisan resolves, and Adam passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Bountiful Promenade untapped as his land for turn. He then goes to combat and swings Collector Oof and Thrasios at Nate, dealing three total damage. With nothing left to do, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and immediately goes to combat on his turn. He then declares Najila as an attacker at Joseph, and on attack, also creates a 1-1 warrior token, also swinging at Joseph. In response to this Najila trigger, Adam taps to cast a Benefactor's Drought. It resolves, all creatures are untapped, and then Adam draws a card. Now with a blocker available, Joseph declares Oof as a blocker for the warrior, Adam draws a card, and then combat damage happens, the warrior dies, and Joseph takes 3 damage from Najila. In his second main phase, Jordan shocks in a Sacred Foundry, dealing 2 damage to himself. He then taps for enough mana to cast a Cryptolith Rite. He then taps Najila for a green due to Cryptolith Rite, along with 3 other mana to cast a Sky Shroud Claim. In response to this cast, Nate taps for 2 mana to cast a Cyclonic Rift targeting Collector Oof. Collector Oof is bounced to Joseph's hand, and then the Sky Shroud Claim resolves, and Jordan searches up two forests to the battlefield, one being a basic forest, and the other being a stomping grounds entering tapped. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and then taps his Soul Ring to cast a Mana Vault, floating one mana. In response to Mana Vault, Joseph pays four mana into Thrasios' ability, taking one damage from Waterlogged Grove, scrying one card to the bottom, and then revealing a stomping ground and having it enter the battlefield tapped. Nate then taps an island for a blue and his mana vault for three colorless, and sacrifices Witching Well to activate it, drawing two cards. He then plays an island as his land for turn, and then uses his floating colorless mana from Soul Ring, along with three additional mana, to cast Urza, High Lord Artificer. It resolves, and he gets a construct onto the battlefield that gets plus one plus one for each artifact he controls. He then taps his Sorcerer Spyglass for a blue using Urza's ability to cast a Relic of Progenitus. Relic resolves, and he then passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays a forest as his land for turn. He then taps for four mana to cast Asceticism. Not liking what's going on, Nate taps for two mana to cast an Arcane Denial targeting Asceticism. In response, however, Adam taps for one green mana to cast a Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer resolves, making his spell uncounterable by blue spells. He draws a card, and then Arcane Denial fizzles, and Asceticism resolves. With nothing left, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and taps for two mana to recast Collector Oof. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps and draws, and plays a Windswept Heath as his land for turn. He then taps for two mana to cast a Mind Blade Renderer. He then moves to combat. He declares Najila as an attacker at Nate, and on attack trigger, Najila creates a 1 1 warrior token that he also swings at Nate. Nate blocks the 1 1 with Urza and then takes 3 damage from Najila. Jordan then loses 1 life and draws a card due to the Mind Blade Render trigger, and with nothing else to do, he gives the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and draws, and in his draw step, takes one damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then taps for five mana to activate Urza. He shuffles his library and then exiles the top card of his library, which is an island. He then plays that island for a turn, 
and passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and plays a forest as his land for turn. He then taps to cast Regrowth, targeting Benefactor's Drought in his graveyard. Not wanting Adam to get any more value off of that card, Joseph taps for one blue mana to cast a Swan Song, targeting Regrowth. Swan Song resolves, and Adam gets a 2 2 bird for his trouble. With nothing left, Adam passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Windswept Heath as his land for turn. Wanting to keep mana and blockers up, he passes the turn to Jordan. On Joseph's end step, Jordan cracks his Windswept Heath, taking 1 damage to tutor up a Hollowed Fountain to the battlefield, tapped. He then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and in his first main phase, casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Nate's Construct. Nate's Construct is destroyed, and Jordan then goes to combat, swinging all of his creatures at Nate. On attack trigger, Najila creates two 1 1 warrior tokens, also swinging at Nate. Nate declares Urza as a blocker for one of the 1 1 tokens, and in response to declare blockers, Jordan taps for 5 mana, one of each color, and activates Najila, untapping all of his attacking creatures, giving them trample, lifelink, and haste until the end of turn, and then taking another combat step after this one. This activation resolves, combat damage happens, the 1-1 one, one warrior token dies, Nate takes 5 total damage, and Jordan gains 6 life due to the lifelink. Jordan then draws a card and loses a life due to Mindblade Render's ability, and Jordan then goes to his second combat phase. In his second combat phase, Jordan attacks Nate with Mindblade Render and his remaining tokens. On attack trigger, Najila creates two other 1-1 warrior tokens, also attacking Nate. Nate blocks one of the tokens with Urza, combat damage happens, Nate takes 3 damage from Mindblade Render and one of the tokens, kills one of the tokens, and Jordan gains 2 life from the Mindblade Render and one of the tokens still having lifelink. Jordan then draws a card and loses a life from Mindblade Render, and then in his second main phase, shocks in a Temple Garden as his land for turn. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and in his draw step takes 1 damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then taps for enough mana to cast an Unwinding Clock. He then taps his mana to cast a Metal Worker. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps his permanence and Nate untaps all of his artifacts due to Unwinding Clock. Adam then draws for turn and plays a Forest as his land for turn. He taps for 1 green mana to cast a Quirion Ranger. In response to this, Joseph cracks his Windswept Heath, searching up a Temple Garden to the battlefield, tapped, and then pays 4 mana to activate Thrasios. In response to the activation, Nate taps for 5 mana to activate Urza. He shuffles his library and then exiles the top card, which is a power artifact. Joseph then resolves his Thrasios activation, scrying one to the bottom, and revealing a Deceiver Exarch to his hand. With nothing else, the Quirion Ranger resolves, and Adam passes the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps his permanence, and Nate untaps his artifacts. Joseph then draws for turn, and plays a Flooded Strand as his land for turn. He then goes to pass the turn to Jordan, however in his end step, Nate taps for 5 mana to activate Urza. In response to this activation, Jordan taps for 3 mana to cast a Crosin Grip, targeting Unwinding Clock. Crosin Grip resolves with Split Second, and then the Urza activation resolves, Nate shuffles his library, and exiles an island off the top of his library. With nothing else, the turn is passed to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and immediately goes to combat. In response to going to combat, Joseph taps for 3 mana to flash out Deceiver Exarch, tapping down Mindblade Render as it enters the battlefield. Not having enough swingers with Mindblade Render tapped down to combo off, Jordan decides to go right into his second main phase. In his second main phase, he taps for 4 mana to cast a Pattern of Rebirth, enchanting Najila and giving her a little protection. He then taps for 1 red mana to cast a Vandal Blast, targeting Metal Worker. In response to this Vandal Blast cast, Nate taps for 1 blue mana to cast a Swan Song, targeting Vandal Blast. Swan Song resolves, Jordan gets a 2 2 Flying Bird, and Vandal Blast is countered. With nothing left, Jordan passes the turn to Nate. Nate untaps, draws, and in his draw step takes 1 damage from Mana Vault remaining tapped. He then pays 5 mana into Urza's ability to activate it, really looking for an answer for the win that Jordan is threatening on his turn. Nate shuffles his library and exiles the top card of his library, which is a Tribute Mage. He then casts it for free, and as it enters the battlefield, he tutors up a Spell Skite to his hand. He then taps for 2 mana to cast said Spell Skite, 
giving him enough blockers to hopefully stop Jordan. With nothing left, he passes the turn to Adam. Adam untaps, draws, and decides to pass the turn on to Joseph. On Adam's end step, Joseph cracks his flooded strand, paying one life to fetch in a steam vents untapped. Joseph then taps for 4 mana to activate Thrasios. He scries one, keeps it on top, and reveals an enlightened tutor, putting it to his hand. He then goes to his turn, untaps, and in response to going to his draw step, taps for 1 white mana to cast an enlightened tutor. Enlightened tutor resolves, and he tutors up a splinter twin to the top of his library. He then goes to his draw step and draws the splinter twin. He then taps for 4 mana to cast a Splinter Twin, enchanting Deceiver Exarch. In response to the cast, Nate taps for 3 mana to cast a Disallow, targeting the Splinter Twin. However, in response, Joseph has the answer he needs, taps for 1 blue to cast a Mystical Dispute, targeting Disallow. Disallow is countered, Splinter Twin resolves, and Joseph then taps Deceiver Exarch using Splinter Twin's ability to create another Deceiver Exarch with haste. As it enters the battlefield, he untaps the original Deceiver Exarch that has Splinter Twin attached to it, and performs a loop where he taps Deceiver Exarch, creating a new one, and as the new one enters the battlefield, untapping the original. He does this until he has 10,000 Deceiver Exarchs with haste, and decides to swing 2,000 at each of his opponents. His opponents declare no blockers, and they each take 2,000 damage, winning Joseph the game. As this video comes to a close, let's just take a few minutes to kind of do a little bit of a post-game review. Starting off this review, let's talk about the most valuable card in this game. Throughout this game, there were a lot of cards that were generating a lot of value, but I really have to give the most valuable card to one very specific card, Nate's Sorcerer's Spyglass. This single 2-mana artifact completely shut down Yisan for the entire game. This Yisan deck runs quite a bit of artifact removal for this very specific instance, but he wasn't able to generate enough value off of his creatures or generate really any card draw other than one spell cast to dig too deep into his library, and he just wasn't able to find anything to deal with it. It's very, very possible that Yisan would have just walked away with the win here if that Spyglass wasn't on the table. Not to mention that once Urza was on the battlefield, the Spyglass now tapped for mana. This single artifact got so much value for both mana and shutting down an entire deck that I have to give it the most valuable card. Along with the most valuable card, let's just take another minute or two to talk about some gameplay decisions that were made in this game that you might find a little bit interesting. If you are looking for more of this in-depth discussion, I highly suggest you take a look at our Patreon, where as a group we'll be doing some more relaxed and less professional commentary over these games, so if you want some more in-depth insight, go ahead and check out the Patreon, this will be for the $5 tier. But for right now, let's take a look at a specific instance in this game, and that instance was the end where Joseph cast Deceiver Exarch, tapping down Mindblade Render. Now, in general, Jordan needed one more creature to get through in order to start generating enough mana with Cryptolith right and generating enough warriors with Najila in order to start going positive and creating infinite steps. And the thing I really want to touch on here is knowing the correct cards to keep and not keep, and this is very important when scrying. With all of the Thrasios activations, Joseph did a good job of scrying cards that were not immediately important to the bottom in order to dig as far as he could over the course of the game. There were many good cards that were scryed to the bottom, however they were not immediately relevant, and knowing what cards are good to keep and what cards you just can tell are not going to be super relevant in the game is very important when playing this more fast-paced style of commander. Keeping a good piece of value on the top, or just keeping a land on the top in order for a little more ramp would have allowed Jordan to just win the game on that turn. So having the knowledge of the deck and the foresight to know that he needs to continue to dig deeper with all of the Thrasios activations really gave him the, the exact card he needed in order to stop Jordan. But that is all we have for you for this video today. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to leave the video a like, and if you aren't already, go ahead and subscribe. We have so much content planned for you guys over the next coming months, and I think you'll all really enjoy it. As it stands right now, we have three seasons planned ahead in terms of the pods, and let me tell you, these pods are going to be very interesting. Some of them have some very fringe and unique commanders, and I think you'll have a good time watching them. So if you aren't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter if you're not already, and join the Discord if you want to be a little bit more involved with the community. That being said, that is all we have for this video. I am Joseph, this is Casually Competitive, and we will see you next time.